Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 516. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and we got some news for you this week. So let's hop right into it. So first up is Symbiote Studios Starlight Glimmer Prototype Reveal. So, uh, Glimmy, anyone? We're going... Uh, sorry, we, we've got a new reveal for Symbiote Studio, uh, who posted Trixie a few days ago. This is just a prototype, so expect ch possible changes. But hopefully we see her appear for sale soon. So if you remember last week, we talked about Symbiote Studios uh, Trixie, Lul Lula Moon, uh, for uh, their plush. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it came out with the head and cape. Or it could be derping, uh, but if that's if that's uh, if if it came with a hat and cape, that would be awesome. And now, uh, their uh, sorry, next on the line is going to be Starlight Glimmer, and judging by the looks of her, she looks pretty good for a prototype. Uh, initially, the body, the base, is already pre-made. Uh, as long as they have the unicorn model and whatnot. Uh, they're just going to keep using it. Uh, the thing that's changed is the hair and whatnot. So, uh, looking at one picture here, uh, the plush that we, oh, the plush that they have here looks pretty good. Um, possible ideas that I think they can uh, come out with is that uh, she's going to have her own main style. That's one. Uh, the other is old main style with uh, the equal uni mark. I'm not 100% sure if that's going to sell or not, but it, that's an option. Uh, so three possible, uh, what you call this, uh, plush, uh, plush designs. First is going to be old main with equal uni mark and probably um, uh, slinting eyes. I, I don't know, um, kind of evil eyes. I don't know. Uh, one of those things. Or... Old main new cutie mark with evil eyes, and this one what we have here, uh, new main happy face and eyes, and also new cutie mark or, or her real cutie mark. So nothing to nothing much to say, but I do assume that this is going to be around the twenty five dollars to thirty dollars. I think no, um, the twenty five dollars plus was. Yeah, it was the for the E one. Now this one is going to be around thirty dollars, I think. So let's move on to the next news. Next news is <clears throat> official Google Drive account shares My Little Pony art on Twitter. That's cool. The official Google Drive Twitter account with more than one point two sorry two point one million followers have decided to share some pony art by. The MLP fan artist at Puyo Ni. Ooh, I don't know how to say that. <laughs> yeah. Ui, ui, oop. <laughs> I guess I'll say that instead. God dang it. Uh, the reason this happened seems to be that the artist mentioned Google Drive in their original tweet. The Google Drive Twitter account. Likely, uh, like many corporate Twitter accounts, regularly post interesting and quirky things that might potentially be seen as relatable. And uh, this is apparently what they decided on yesterday. So, <clears throat> this is cool in so many ways because what we're in 2023 right now and the days of big media company, whatever it is, uh, just mentioning or just uh, tweeting or just mentioning something about My Little Pony or the Bronies in general is very, very slim and very, very rare. So this is kind of a quote-unquote feel-good story. And yeah, uh, the it's kind of freaky how Google Drive itself uh, somehow f uh, managed to kind of 
get notified even though it was not mentioned or uh, tagged or yeah I mentioned or tagged so let's see uh, the only mention is that uh, I forgot that this last year's artwork exists because I found them on my Google Drive. So that's the only mention of Google Drive, okay? Not even at or tagged, all right? And then uh, tags were uh, My Little Pony, MLP, MLP G4, MLG5, Rainbow Dash, Tarot Glamour, Pinkie Pie, uh, Easy Moonblow artwork, fan work, uh, artwork, fan art. So those were <clears throat> the only mentions. So yeah, oh boy. Um, th th this is just amazing. Like, I wonder what kind of system that they do just to ping mentions. And I remember personally me happening. Sorry, this happening to me, but for another what you call this uh company. Uh, I remember this way back when in the days uh of. I'm just going to say six to seven years ago, probably give or take. I don't remember. But I was having trouble with my internet. And it was it was not that bad of a case. It's just that uh, YouTube doesn't seem to be loading properly. Uh, videos doesn't seem to play properly and whatnot. And uh, I, I just had trouble with that. So wha what I did was like I was just having this trouble for about uh, months and months. I, I don't remember how long, but it was just months. And I, j just on a lark, I went on to Twitter and just say, hey, anyone in Malaysia, does anyone seem to have problems with uh, the internet provider for, yeah, any problem with this internet provider watching this uh, content, uh, watching YouTube? Didn't really notice anything until I got a ping and then like oh uh what's this this is fascinating and uh the ISP contacted me and asked oh uh what's the problem and so on blah 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 so it was it was a very interesting uh what you call this experience to get pinged by a corporate account trying to solve your problem because the thing is I haven't even thought about contacting the company because it was kind of a uh, scenario where how would I know that this is a problem with the internet? I thought it could be a problem with YouTube, my computer, or whatever it is. It, it, it was just baffling. And the, the I would say the silly part was that, okay, we, we'll, start, we'll try to solve your problem. We'll reset the uh server how is the internet looking now is your youtube playing it is that's good okay bye bye and that happened <laughs> wait what that's all Woo. <clears throat> so yeah um nothing new to that antidote uh let's let's move on <laughs> The My Little Pony Wiki gets mentioned in an upcoming IDW comic. Yay! Uh, wiki, uh, MLP Wiki or Film Wiki? Best Wiki. Because here, here's the thing. I've traveled. <laughs> I won't say travel. I, I scoured the internet for all content. Uh, for, what you call this? Wiki content and so on. I, I've seen... Yu-Gi-Oh's, i seen Magic, i seen uh, Transformers, i seen uh, Dungeons and Dragons, and so on, blah, 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 blah. There's, there's a lot I've seen. There, there is a lot. And they're good, they're good. And if we go back to and cartoons or animation, uh, there's Film Wiki, and there's the rest. And what I mean by that is, the people who are dedicated to updating and keeping Film Wiki as good as it is is amazing. The way that they list down everything, the way that they make sure uh, screen caps or screenshots are arranged and so on, like just the dedication and amount of work put into it is just amazing and 
reviewing shows or reviewing content for uh, ponies and referring to the film wiki is just amazing. Now you go to uh, Ben 10 and so on. Yeah, you do have the basics and whatnot, but trying to review a show and not having a dedicated amount of uh, screen caps is kind of challenging. And I'm seeing this too with uh, G5 Wiki because I, I don't know if they couldn't really do the same process if G5, sorry, uh, um, FIM, FIM, or not many people are dedicated to G5 as they were with uh, FIM. So I, I, I just find it. Uh, so, sorry, I, I just find the film wiki page to be very amazing. Anyway, let's read on to the news. Panel from IDW's My Little Pony 40th Anniversary Special has been revealed on Twitter by R Riley? Far R Riley, Riley, Riley Farmer? the editor of the G5 My Little Pony comics. We just sent the 40th anniversary celebration to print. Here's a sneak peek of one of my favorite panels by Bri Brianna Cherry. The 100-page 40th anniversary special comic featured three stories, one of which is set in the present day real world, where an aunt and her My Little Pony long-loving niece have to rely on some dusty G1 toys for entertainment when the power goes out. The other two stories are set in 1980s and in G5 era modern Equestria. According to the publisher, the comic will be released on July 12th and a hardcover deluxe version will be released on December 12th. So judging, uh, reading on the synopsis here or the setting is kind of interesting, but I'm going to go for the panel first. <clears throat> so let's zoom in and see what we get. Oh no, it's happening again. Uh, boy. Yep. Um, okay. Anyway. <clears throat> uh, we see a tablet here have Twilight on it. We see laptops. We see a phone. Okay, so this is basically us in this is the uh, first story modern day present day real world stuff so uh what's the panel say well i'm re well i'm reading the wiki on my laptop then on the tablet i'm looking at the pony comics did you know the they have stories that aren't even in the show uh, and then then i'm talking to christine on my phone she's watching my little pony at her house too except we're not friends right now so Wow. Uh, a few tidbits. <laughs> um, relying on the wiki. Uh, that, that could be a joke or... I rely on the wiki, so yay. Um, reading stuff on the wiki on the laptop, cool. And then uh, Pony Comics. I'm guessing this is the Pony Comics. And yes, I did know that there are stories that aren't even in the show. That's why the comics are awesome because you have possible uh, story avenues to tell and that's how we got the um, mirror world storyline where Sombra was good and in love with the comic world Celestia and they kind of dated and uh, <laughs> let's just say that oh boy that that, oof, that story started a lot of Mm, a lot of people were not happy with that one. I was, I was okay with it. I, I like it. I, I want Celeste to be happy. <clears throat> so, anywho, uh, let's see. So we will, uh, where Ed and her. So, I, I, I like this concept where you have a veteran pony fan or casual pony fan, uh, having some pony toys and their G one specifically and. I'm just thinking, where are they going to tell the story? Because we have, we see the niece here being a hardcore pony fan. 
And I'm just guessing that's G4 to G5, probably in between that slot. And then when she gets introduced to G1, she's thinking like, oh, the models, the, the, the toys, they don't look good. Why, why are they so chubby? Why, why are they so like this? Why are they so horse-like? <laughs> uh, that, that could be a possibility. And I'm seeing here that she's reading on the wiki and then knowing about the comics. So uh, probably referring to one of the other comics, uh, Generations. So because uh, in Generations, we did have some retro ponies. Yeah, those were G1, I remember, right? Yeah, so we did have some G1 ponies coming into G4, uh, communicating with um, them and whatnot and having fun. So so that, that could be an avenue to cross-promote their media. It seems that's the case right now. Then uh, the second story is a set in 1980s. That one I can't really ponder what kind of story that could be because... Uh, with that, you'll have something to something to akin of, uh, more of history. It it would be amazing to give a brief rundown of how ponies were made and discovered or whatever. Like, like that could be very, f uh, sorry, that could be a very fun history lesson for everyone to pick up and learn. I personally would love to know what uh, how. That might be started and whatnot. That that will be fun. And the last one is G five era modern Equestria. Uh, that one I can't tell. Is it going to be uh the G five universe story ponies, or are we going to be in the real world us talking about G five? I I think it's the former. Because if it was the latter, that would be very strange. It's still going on. People are still processing their feelings. And last news is <clears throat> the Generation 5 My Little Pony episode guy. Oh boy, this is, this is strong. This is stonk. <clears throat> Alright, give, give me a sip first. <sighs> And let's go. This is a comprehensive viewing guide for Generation 5 My Little Pony Media. With dozens of episodes across multiple shows and platforms, as well as comics, games, and other media, it can get a bit confusing. I do agree. If you're new to G5 or catching up on, this guide should be helpful to you. Thank you so much. Overcast, you got no idea how much I want this. Uh, click here for the most recent uh, release content. This guide is up to date regularly. If there are issues or errors, if you or if you have suggestions, please mention them in the comments. The main section of the guide includes the main 3D animated media, My Little Pony Generations, and My Little Pony Make Your Mark. The 2D animation shorts, My Little Pony Tell Your Tales, official licensed comics by IDW Publishing, and My Little Pony the podcast. Most ep <coughs> podcast, yes, full stop there. Most episodes are listed according to the order or in which they were released. If they, if the events that occur in them and the episode numbering don't indicate a different order books, video games, soundtrack, and future content are listed separately. Where content is official, uh, officially available for free, YouTube and Apple Podcasts, links are provided below. In other cases, a subscription or purchase is required. A new generation can be streamed on Netflix or bought or rented through video-on-demand services. Make Your Mark can be streamed on Netflix. Comic by IDW Publishing can be purchased through Amazon, Apple Books, Things from Another World, and other book e and other book and ebook stores. Tell you tale episodes have been released in English in two different YouTube 
Challenge. Oh, what? On two different YouTube channels. What? Yes, bro. Get your thinking together. Come on. Oh, God. Why? Why separate? <sighs> anyway, episodes 1 to 49 were first released on My Little Pony Official, and later episodes were first released on the My Little Pony Tell You. I can see why. Yes, I understand. And I'm going to break it down for you. I, I know I'm in the middle of reading this, but I just want to break it down before I lose my attention. So, here's the thing. The official My Little Pony YouTube channel is a barrage of stuff. They're short clips, long clips, um, ads and whatnot. And I'm not, I'm not talking about... Uh, ads that play on the video. No, no, I'm talking about toy ads that they produce and just uploaded there because why not? We did content for it. Sorry, we did produce it. Why Why not just show it up there so people can just take a look, see and whatnot because we put it into it. Yeah, I, I don't mind. Also, promoting the toys. I mean, for me, it's just, uh, we did something, this is it, uh, this is cool. And, and you know what? I, I do wish that they put some behind the scenes on how uh, the making of the ad is because that would be really cool. That would be a uh, a workaround. Sorry, that, that would be a workaround for not being blatantly uh, catering to selling toys. At least you can have some, oh, this is how we did the ad or, or this is how we did the uh, commercial. So, uh, this this is the finished product. This is how we made it. So that that would be cool, in my opinion, at least. So anyway, um, the reason why they split it up is because just to make things coherent and clean. Because when I was trying to watch, uh, tell your tales, it it was a mess. Just going through checking for episode one was a hassle and clicking through the uh list didn't really did me any well uh, sorry didn't it did, didn't really do me any good because okay I clicked episode one and I had to go through to multiple videos before I can find number two and even if I did find number two it was kind of far away because if I don't mistaken they upload every day and okay, there's the playlist system. All right, cool. The playlist system helps because you'll play from one to whatever the latest is. The problem is they insert music videos from the episode. So technically, I got spoiled from the content they they have. Example, let's just say there's a music in, sorry, there's a uh, song in episode three. Okay, uh, watch one, two, song, then episode three. I'm like, wait, what? What's going on here? Why? why? Oh no, you didn't. Oh, God. I got... And just going, tr just trying to make things coherent, just trying to make things not break my mind is already hard for the playlist. So them moving to tell your, uh, to My Little Pony Tell Your Tale, the channel is, Makes sense, but I haven't even checked that one out yet. And I'm just guessing that the same thing is going to happen with the playlist and all. You know, I'm going to do it now. I'm going to, I'm going to see how it looks. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shorts, that's the, that's the in thing now. Watch tell you from me. Oh, ho, ho, ho. oh, this is a life. It looks like a, oh, no, no, no. Um... So this is the video. Oh, what's this? Uh, my little tell you tale is in, okay. So I, I feel like this is shorts and compilations. Okay. Uh, season one. All right. Okay. Uh, 
tell you tale. What's this? Full episode? Oh, oh, all right. I... Okay, let's see playlist. Maybe playlist can help. Uh, tell your tale. Oh, 47 videos. So, oh man. Okay, see, see, this is what I mean by just trying to keep things coherent. Uh, say, okay, this one already got me scratching my head. 47 videos, why is that? I thought they have uh, 49 episodes. The, what you call this, uh, episode guide here tell, says that 1 to 49. But that was on the previous channel, so yeah, cool. Okay, so let's see. Uh, oh god okay i'm gonna finish this this guy links to my little pony official for episode 1 to 39 only avoiding videos that include compilation of other episodes after the credits episode 1 to 20 are also available on netflix a new generation make <coughs> a new generation make your mark and tell your tale are each available in 30 in about 30 languages most dubs are official available on Netflix or separate YouTube channels in several languages. Official dubs of a new generation are not available on Netflix and have only been shown on TV channels. Alright then, so I'm just gonna really go into this one and see. Uh, oh god. Oh God! Oh, uh, see here, two of uh, two unavailable videos are hidden, so that means oh God! Uh, wait, what? Twenty nine, thirty, thirty one, four. Whoa! I mean, that's quite a leap there, yo. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, I'm just gonna try see the official when what I get. I know I'm gonna regret this. Oh, yay. Oh my god, I. Uh, Grishan, the brush off. Yeah, okay, um. Didn't they? I guess not. Okay, I'm just gonna check out the playlist. Uh, they only have, I guess, 50. Oh, uh, you know what? No, I, I, I'm giving up on that. I'm giving up on that project. No. So anyway, carrying on with the news. Oh, boys. We have Legends here. Um, film for 44 minutes special. Film of 44 minutes specials. Part of the main story and other reference in later episodes. First appearance uh, for, uh, of a song. Uh, humor that may be unsuitable for adults. So... Uh, this this is comprehensive. This is very cool, and I I and I really like this. So if we are going to review G five, I guess probably this would be the way to do it. So what would what what we would do is check off the list to see what's really needed. Um, so we're. We're, we're kind of looking for overarching storylines to see what really matters. So, uh, the movie, the movie we've done before, so nothing, uh, we don't need, uh, we don't really need to go into it anymore. So, we'll probably take, see, uh, um, Sister's Take Flight, a home to, sh a home to share, welcome to the main melody, 
uh, clip tort and so on. And then uh, make your mark. We'll probably do dumpster diving. And we just go on, go on. Oh, wow. <clears throat> so, yeah, there, there's a lot. And, ooh, the podcast, wait. Podcast has... Oh, man. Uh, I'm just going to click and see. 13 minutes, okay. Okay, so, so they're not horrible monsters uh what you call this they're not uh length monsters like certain podcasts that run for four hours so yeah uh, 13 minutes that's digestible cool 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 make your mark chapter three so there's something on chapter four soundtrack other official media wow Ooh, i wonder where the game comes in uh okay this video game takes place after My Little Pony, A New Generation, but its story was developed independently of that My Little Pony, Make Your Mark. So it doesn't fit into the main timeline. The game is also available for Windows Steam console. And so, all right, so basically what happens is um, the game was slotted, was to be slotted here but it divert into its own thing. So yeah, okay, cool, 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 cool. All right, cool. All right. This is a very comprehensive list and I can see it growing. And yeah, this this is really good. This is really good. So um, what I would do is probably uh, talk to the guys and consider what to review because um, we don't really need to do all of it we just need to do what's uh most of it so yeah oh boy that is the news for this week so let's move on to the next topic and the next topic is what has i been doing for my week <laughs> so my week has been pretty busy um work and whatnot but one of the few things that i okay yeah here we go that, that that's to get me center but Man, I'm not comfortable. You know, yeah, let's let's just do this. I'm I'm comfortable this way. So, one of the few things that I did was well, um, play D and D, played Magic the Gathering, and watch movies. Um, I'm gonna go for movie first. So, watch two movies. Um, uh, one of them was Spider Man into the Spider Verse, and my first impressions were. Wow, uh, this movie kind of uh, was a letdown. And what I mean by that was that I went into the movie hoping to have a great time, having to have a laugh and uh, some great stories. I, I got that all, but what I wasn't expecting was to be continued in the next issue or the next chapter or whatever. So that took the, that, that kind of pulled the rug on me. Uh, had the same feeling when I watched um, the first Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship of the Rings. So yeah, uh, me not knowing that Spider-Man was going to be a two-parter was kind of a rug pull on me. Like, wait, what? Oh God, I wasn't expecting that because uh, when watching the movie, it was great and it was awesome. It was building up to a, what you call it, they, they were building up to a climax and whatnot, but when we reached to the end, or near the end, they say, they say, they say something like, to be continued. And like, wait, what? I didn't know this. Was, uh, maybe some of you do, maybe you don't. And going in with the mindset of, this is going to be one and done, kind of spoiled it for me. Now, when I t sit and think about it, it was an okay movie. Uh, there was a lot of references to, sp well, obviously spider man and whatnot, but there was a lot of reference to other things. Uh, Doctor Strange got a mention. I won't say how he was mentioned, but got a mention. And the movie itself was pretty okay. It was fun. Uh, I do like the interaction between Miles and Gwen and the other spider Man's and whatnot. And 
that was that was fun. The second movie I watched was Transformers Beast Wars. Is it Beast Wars? I, I don't remember. Rise of the Beast, something like that? I don't care. Uh, but the movie itself was pretty awesome. It was... How do I put this? It was a action movie where you know what you're getting into. You, I won't say turn off your brain, but it's on cruise control. You, you already know you don't need to think um, too critically because, well, uh, this is this movie is going to be an action movie where you just sit, eat popcorn, and just enjoy the spectacles. And what do you call this? Um, and the story was pretty basic. The effects were really well done, and the the character development was okay. Okay, I mean, it wasn't the best. Her complaints about humans, uh, and I, I, I kind of get, I, I kind of understand why. Uh, yeah, I, I can understand why, uh, the hate for the human characters because we are watching Transformers. We want to see robots fight. We want to see robots have what you call this, um, interactions or, you know what. Give a second. Oh, hi guys. Sorry about that. Um, there was a ding dong at the door. Need to take mail. Where was I again? Yeah, Transformers, Beast Wars. It was fun. It was a fun popcorn movie. Didn't really. Didn't really blew my. Okay, it did blew my mind. The, the spoilers at the end. Sorry. Um. Yeah, spoilers, there was something really amazing at the end. Uh, and this was the only... There, there was mid-credits. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, there were no end credits. So, after that mind-blowing event happened, you can just walk out of the theater if you're interested in watching. Oh boy. <clears throat> and then... Yeah, uh, that, that's about it for my week. Fun things happen in D and D, which you can probably catch out on my personal channel. Uh, that's at Norman Sanzo. Uh, I play D and D on a weekly basis and upload those adventures onto my personal channel. Magic, uh, man, magic content is hard to make if you don't have the right gear, and I don't have the right gear, and I'm struggling to try and find right gear that are affordable, and by that I mean. An overhead camera that is good, stable enough, and works well. Oh, man. The, the Magic game content is just too strong right now. Like, if you go in without a strong presence, a strong concept, or even anything that works for you, it's just going to, you're, you're just going to be drowning pools. Oh, one more thing I also forgot to mention. I played Street Fighter Six. Street Fighter Six. So, remember way back in the days when I was saying stuff like, Oh, I'm playing... Uh, this week I'm playing Payday 2. Uh, I play Street Fighter Six, Overwatch. Overwatch, and so on. And then like, I dropped Payday 2 to keep playing uh, Street Fighter Six And... Sorry, Street Fighter Five, And then uh, Overwatch... And then, uh, here we are. I dropped playing Overwatch 2 after a few months. Like, ah. That game, man. Like, it has so much potential. But the problem is just the company running the game is just a... They're, they're just monsters, you know. Also, the fact that it's a free-to-play game now, kind of pisses me off. And what I mean by that is just this. Just, just imagine this. You came in to the game. You bought the game. You, you bought the $60 game and you, you played. And then you got content update after content update after content update. Uh, they gave, what you call this, uh, new characters for free. This is Overwatch 1, by the way. 
they gave you characters for free and you just play the game and and you kind of enjoy it and if you want and if you want to show them some appreciation you bought some merch not really merch but you bought some loot boxes and then that became its controversy on its own and then uh, moving on to Overwatch 2 they decided you know what we're going to make the game free to play and then uh, it came out the game uh, and also they stated like oh if you were a player of Overwatch 1 original uh, you get the first DLC character or the first new character for free and from that point on it's like okay you want new stuff you pay us also there's this tracking uh daily thing where you need to kind of play the game hit levels just to get stuff and that kind of box down the whole thing for me like oh man i'm not good enough i i i can't consistently win or stuff like oh man that's just that just sucks for me and i i just dropped it like a bad habit and also hearing uh what activision blizzard did to their uh employees and also the uh also everything in general it's just like yeah no 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 you're not gonna get my money oh also the way that they are selling stuff is just oh god and here's the thing i understand the game is free to play so they need to earn their income for the game in this fashion in this manner but at the same time too why even set it to free to play you could have just charged 60 bucks and we would buy it in drove ban people who cheat and hack and then force him to buy again like yeah you you can do that you did it before in overwatch one and that was a big pull for you the only reason why you needed to do overwatch 2 was to update the game engine so that it could support uh player versus environments not even that that's that's a lie the original concept was yes that but now no because you decided to cancel that project and do whatever the crap you want to do with <gasps> that's why i stopped playing overwatch the game the game is how, how do i put this the essence of the game, the idea, everything about that is fun. What makes it not fun is corporate. From the, in, I call it forceful inclusion of characters being a certain alignment and whatnot. That, that feels like you're just doing this just because you want kudo points from this segment of the community or community in general because hey soldier 76 is gay and you have a pop-off from the lgbtq plus community saying yeah represent woo and in all essence like do we really need to know does it really matter you don't really have a strong story to support that so wait what the, the thing about for me personally you can add in all your all the lgbtq plus characters that you want and whatnot what i want is them to be earned i, I want them to not really play an integral part but what i want is just that the inclusion seems seamless like uh, for example uh, a movie called nor paranorman uh, paranorman uh, done by dreamworks if i'm not mistaken movie was awesome and whatnot blah 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 uh, in the end 
uh, one of the booty characters says that, oh, um, he loves to watch that movie with his boyfriend. Uh, okay, that came out of nowhere, but okay. And personally, I dig it because his sexual orientation didn't really play a part in the movie. It's just there to be there. And maybe it's just for a laugh and whatnot, but eh, he still is. He, the character is the character because of the character, not because of his uh, gender... Uh, sorry, well, not because of his preference, preferences and whatnot. So, to, to me, it, it just feels like a show needs to earn their... What you call this? A show needs to earn their inclusion. Like, tell a story from start to finish make sure that it's earned. Uh, Trace of Overwatch is gay and so on. Yeah. I mean, that one, I, I don't know. Like, I I guess technically it doesn't really play, a, I, I technically it doesn't really matter. I, I don't know, man. Like, would I say that's earned? I guess they, they kind of build it up. Yeah, yeah, it does earn because they kind of build it up with them having a comic about it, telling the story about how Tracer, uh, it was a Christmas comic, if I remember right. Yeah, uh, how she celebrated Christmas and how she just interacts at home. Like, she needs to wear her uh, backpack because it kind of stabilizes her. Yeah, it kind of stabilizes her because uh, if not, she'll just uh, wig out in time and whatnot. So with the backpack on, she gets stabilized. And when she's at home, uh, she puts the backpack in some kind of charger slash generator where it kind of admits a feel where she can just move freely at home without, uh, what you call this, uh, move freely at home without wearing the backpack 24-7. So... Those those little details, those little things, kind of, personally, I feel like they earn that because you tell the story. You, you tell a story from start to beginning. Uh, sorry, from start to wherever you want to go and and uh, have this, uh, and, and at least give a coherent reason to why and so on. Uh, the, the, the whole thing doesn't really need to be uh, coherent. I'm oh, sorry. The whole thing doesn't need to be very in depth and whatnot, but it's just that that thing there where, where she, sorry, the thing there where the comic just states out, oh, this is uh, how it's done, and oh, that's my girlfriend, and oh, so this like, okay, that's a mention. Okay, yeah, and to me, uh, that, that's uh, no, I don't, I don't mind it. I don't mind it. <sighs> but. That's my stance on it. Like, the sexual orientation of characters doesn't really matter. It's just that how you portray it and is it earned? Like, even with uh, different sex uh, interests, like, uh, well, I, I forgot the word, but... Uh, yeah, even with different sexes, like the the thing that I find it annoying is okay. Uh, technically it's auto, it's acceptable. Yeah, okay, whatever. But the thing is that if you force a relationship on a character, or it feels like it wasn't earned, or it wasn't really told well, or yeah, it wasn't earned. It just feels like ugh, this is just dumb. Please, could we just? No, I, I feel like this is just trash. I still feel the same way. Like, that's my stance on everything, I guess. Anyway, I've been babbling for too long and my brain is going to rot. So let's move on to the end. So anyway, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at theambitionalgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also, Stitcher Radio. And also, like our Facebook page. 
You can also catch us on PanelLife.com. Links are in the show notes. Also, do subscribe to the Review and Discussion Podcast on iTunes and Stitch Radio. Over there, you can catch me. Okay, higher bit. Alright, okay. Uh, me, Silver Quill, Totera, Jacob, reviewing the pony episodes, comics, specials, movies, and sometimes we like to do other things than ponies, and those can be cartoons, animes, comics, mangas, video games, movies, and sometimes random discussion about stuff. So, uh, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank you, Jacob, Lucky Knight, and also myself, Like, Thank you so much, guys. You are great. Whew. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo, and I'll catch you guys next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya.